At Forever Paws Animal Shelter, our mission is simple. Place these valued animals in loving homes. Forever Paws Animal Shelter, giving animals a new leash on life. Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go back through some of my old projects and old photos and uh, turn these old photographs into videos. And what we're going to begin with is my 1965 Vox Ace that I got once upon a time. Uh, this thing needed a lot of work. Uh, the Vox Ace was actually made by JMI in Dartford, uh, Kent in the UK. Uh, this is not one of the Italian-made Crucianelli factory jobs. Uh, this is an actual uh, English-made Vox, uh, which are fairly rare in the U.S. They did not import very many of these into the U.S. You can see the unusual headstock shape here with the Vox logo in green and the ace that's almost going off the edge of the headstock actually there, which is kind of funny. Looks very slapdash. Uh, you can also see the Vox logo uh, that is stamped into the ashtray on the bridge. Uh, the ashtray cover, that's just an ashtray cover for the bridge that is removable. And you can also see what appears to be kind of a, it's kind of a mahogany-ish body, it, but it might be like a poplar or something, I'm not sure, 100%. Again, you can see a little bit better the Vox there. You can also see the knobs. The knobs are very similar to the knobs they were using on the JMI era uh, amplifiers. In fact, they are the same knobs. Sort of an unusual tip on the tremolo arm as well. Uh, here I'm just kind of showing the fretboard because I had to do a lot of fret work on this guitar, and that's this is not the completed version either. But here's a shot of the back, and you can kind of see, uh, you know, that hooked, uh, that hooked sort of a headstock really stands out. The body on this thing was pretty thin. Um, this was not a very thick body at all. And I have to say, these guitars were just not very well made. They're almost like an afterthought, um, you know, in, in uh, Vox's canon of instruments. Uh, they didn't really take too much time or spend too much uh, R&D on these. You can really tell it. On the back of the headstock, it is unusual. It's got this big medallion that says Made in England. And then right above that, you can see the serial number. You can also sort of see there that the neck grain is a sycamore. Uh, this thing had a lot of issues. Uh, first of all, the nut was cut way, way down on the slots, so I had to was going to have to reslot the nut at the very least, and or fill it with uh, fill it with a filler and then recut it. So I just decided to cut a whole new nut. You can see how low they are right there. And also, the fret ends were severely coming out of the board. Um, this thing had such a um, such a small radius, and you'll see here in just a second that this is a really, really overly radiused neck, uh, and those those frets just pop right out of the end. So every one of those is going to have to be glued back down. This is one of the little tricks I utilize to get strings out of the way, so I don't have to remove them completely from a guitar. Uh, just nice little trick to keep under your hat there. Uh, we've got a, a nut blank that we're going to use to replace the nut, uh, but first we're going to have to get it out of there. So uh, let's get the trusty fret hammer and start hammering on it. And I discovered relatively quickly that this hammer was kind of too big to do the job, so I went to a smaller little hammer, uh, and that was uh, able to get it out of there. But once again, that this uh, this nut, somebody had just filed the hell out of this nut, so it was really, really low on the slots, and uh, all, the, all of the strings were just completely fretting out. It does uh, appear to have a rosewood fretboard, which is interesting given that it has a, a sycamore neck and a really weird uh, body wood, like a, somebody said it was agua or agus, or I don't remember for sure, but... Uh, here we're getting ready to cut the nut, uh, and we're just sizing it up against our blank. 
And usually what I like to do is uh, use the old nut where possible because it's just going to give you a good guideline to kind of go by. You know, you know, really roughly what uh, the new nut is going to have to look like if you compare it to the old nut. And that's what we've done here. I've just used a, sh a small Sharpie and just traced it out. And I'm going to rough cut it with, uh, uh, with a little saw here. Um, this is a saw and clamp that you can obtain from Stuart McDonald. Uh, but other companies make very similar products and you can find usually cheaper. Uh, but here I've lopped off the end of it. So we're just kind of roughly, um, you know, just sort of roughing this in. And you have to make several cuts across the top because, of course, you got a straight edge on your uh, saw, but the, you're going to have to curve the edge on the actual final piece. So you have to go through a few different stages. And here I was actually uh, trying something different. I think I was, I had uh, sawed most of the way through it, and it kind of got difficult, so I used the, uh, uh, I used my fret pliers <laughs> to snap it the rest of the way off. There you can see several little pieces are just coming off one at a time. And that's pretty much the roughed in uh, nut. So you can see it right there up against the old nut, which is on top. Uh, I've, you know, marked out where the uh, strings were. Um, that's just going to kind of help us uh, when we're doing the uh, string slots. That way, I don't have to drink. I don't have to drag out the slotting tool. Here, you can see the uh, severity of the radius. Look at that. That's a seven and a quarter inch radius block, and it's even smaller than that. So this thing is just a tiny radius. Uh, there, you can see also once again, you know, just the. It's not going to be exact, but it's just going to give a, get us close enough, uh, and it's a lot easier to sand if you use the radius block to sand off the top of. Uh, uh, you know, of your new piece because it's just going to kind of smooth everything out a little easier. You know, there's more art than science to this. When you're making a, a nut from a blank, it's just, this is one of those things, it just takes kind of an artist eye. You just, you know, it's almost like making a tiny sculpture in a way. Uh, right here, I've actually glued the, I have to thin this thing down, so I've actually glued it to the, or not glued it, but I've stuck it to the back of a piece of uh, sandpaper. That way I can press it down. I can use the back of the sandpaper so I don't have to mess up my fingertips trying to sand the thing down, which makes it a little easier. Here is the roughed in uh, new piece, the nut. Here's the neck pocket, and it's got a stamp on there. You can barely make it out. It says Jan of 1965 right there. And then there's also a stamp on the neck, oddly enough. It says Feb or February of 1965, and then there's a G there as well, which I'm not sure what that stands for. Uh, back on the nut over here, I've removed it from the guitar, so the width is correct, and uh, we're just going to... Uh, we're just going to start sanding on it a little bit more. Uh, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to get the uh, look at the electronics since we have one of these and, you know, never seen it before. Might as well look at the electronics. You can see that there's an extra route for another pickup there as well, which would have gone on the Super Ace model, which was a different model, one step up from this one. But yeah, very, very clean on the inside. Uh, super clean. Everything, it, it looks completely untouched. And another shot of the route there. You can see the third pickup route. And you can also see the ashtray bridge removed there as well. And uh, there's some barrel saddles, kind of like on a Telecaster in a way. If you notice the trim arm also, there's uh, the piece is missing off the end of the trim arm. That just kind of slides off. Here's just a picture of my tools laid out. I'm not sure why I took this picture. Uh, we're getting ready actually here to uh, start uh, on some fret work. I've already glued the fret ends down, and it took super glue in order to do that. And what I'm doing now is just uh, uh, basically s uh, smoothing out all the frets, um, crowning, and uh, polishing them all. And I think at this time I had, I had a little fetish with using these little uh, pumice. Um, I think that's like a pumice sander block. But yeah, you can kind of see there a couple of the fret ends that are poking up and get a better idea of what I was sort of up against <clears throat> having to glue those down. But yeah, that's it. That's a 1965 
Vox Ace. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. I may do more of these little uh, walkthroughs in the future. If you enjoy them, uh, please hit, hit like, and uh, we will see y'all later.